Hi, and welcome to Cemetery of Choice, where we look at abortion deaths, both from the pre-legal and the post-legal era. And today we are looking at when it definitely was not great to be the first. And in this case, it's this young woman, Sarah. Sarah had the dubious distinction of being the first young woman to die at the largest for-profit abortion chain in the Western Hemisphere. Now, Sarah was 22 when she went to San Vicente Hospital in Los Angeles on August 11th, 1970. Now, yes, this was prior to Roe versus Wade, but California had legalized abortions as long as it was done in a hospital. So what happened is that abortion hospitals sprang up all over the place and San Vicente was one of them. So she checked in on August 11th, 1970 for what's called a hysterotomy abortion. Now, fortunately, they don't do these anymore, but it was just like a, a C-section with the intention of delivering the baby so early that it would die of extreme prematurity. Um, as you can imagine, that had a fairly high complication rate and a fairly high mortality rate for the mothers. Now, Shortly after they started the abortion, Sarah went into ventricular fibrillation, which was when her heart was just not beating in a consistent pattern to um, course blood through her body. And the staff there at San Vicente treated her for about an hour before transferring her to Midway Hospital down the street. She was pronounced dead at 4.57 a.m. on August 12th. The autopsy found yellow fluid in her heart and frothy tan fluid in her lungs, and a seven-inch male fetus still in her uterus. Now, five other women died from abortions they underwent at San Vicente that I know of. I suspect that there were more. Subscribe so I get monetized, so I can go to Los Angeles and do research and find out what was going on here. Because we noticed that Sarah died in 1970, Natalie died in 1972, Mary died in 1984. Now, an interesting thing with Mary is that uh, San Vicente was in Los Angeles County, but Mary was from Orange County. So the staff, I think it was actually Edward Allred, we'll get to that in a minute, managed to get her through the coroner's office without an autopsy. But when the death certificate got to Orange County, the clerk looked at it and said, women in their early 40s don't bleed to death from natural causes. Something was going on here. And that's when they did the autopsy and the investigation and discovered that Mary had died from a botched abortion. So I suspect that sometime after Natalie's death, they had found out how to just slip the bodies through the coroner's office without drawing any attention. And then people started paying a little bit more attention after Mary died. Then Lenice died in 1986, Joyce in 1988, and then not another death until Orion in 2005. Well, with better treatment, abortion is becoming safer for women, and um, they're becoming better able to save women who suffer catastrophic complications. So maybe there's nothing fishy about that gap between 1988 and 2005. But again, like, share, subscribe. I want to go to Los Angeles, go through the coroner's records and find out. So at some point, I think it was between the death of Natalie and the death of Mary, San Vicente was bought out by Family Planning Associates Medical Group, the largest chain of for-profit abortion clinics in the world. So some of those San Vicente deaths were also Family Planning Associates deaths. And FPA founder, Dr. Edward Campbell Allred, is credited as having been the creator of the assembly line abortion. Uh, I wish I could find the quote. One of his admirers said that Allred did for abortion what Ray Kroc did for hamburgers. Now, uh, Family Planning Associates outside of San Vicente Hospital was also not necessarily the safest place for women. We had Denise, who died in 1970, Patricia, who died in 84, Josefina in 85, Tammy in 88, Deanna in 92, 
Susan, also in 92, Christina in 94, Tatanisha in 1995, Nakia in 1998, Maria in 1999, Kimberly and another woman named Maria in 2000, and then Chanel in 2004. And there tends to be a lag between women dying and us finding out about them because it takes a while for the family to bring forward a malpractice suit. And that tends to be the point at which we find out about these deaths. And when I worked at Life Dynamics, the um, attorney who was handling the Deanna Bell suit contacted us for litigation support. And we told him, first thing you need to do, because FPA is in California and in Illinois. And we said they are going to file to keep the California deaths because some of these deaths were similar to what happened to Deanna. They are going to fight to say that the California deaths are not relevant. You need to get in there and file first to include them. So they did. And they had Allred come in for a deposition. And he admitted under oath that he never did a preventability study after a woman died to make sure that that never happened again. And Family Planning Associates Medical Group is still the flagship of the National Abortion Federation, which supposedly ensures that abortions in their clinics are performed in a way that is absolutely as safe for the mother as possible. Yeah, Kermit Gosnell worked at one of those clinics. So I would love to see National Abortion Federation get their comeuppance.